Do you have the time to listen to me whine about nothing and everything all I want? Hey guys, how's it going? It is I, the real Randy Chavez, coming at you today with a Pokemon sales data video. There's a little bit to go over today, <coughs> what I think is undervalued and overvalued um, as far as sales data for the last couple of days. I'm breaking on into it, uh, Lugia, the Charizard of the second generation. I don't know how many times I have to say it. Uh, very, very undervalued in my opinion. All of these. We have a Lugia first edition. It was a raw copy. I would have given it a nine. It had one little scratch on the hollow. Outside of that, everything looked pretty well. Um, and it did have a swirl on it as well. It sold for $6,600. <coughs> I think the speculation on that was like, oh, it might be a soft 10. Uh, I don't believe so. <laughs> Again, just because of this one scratch on the hollow gives it a nine. Anyway, slight bit of whitening and, and edgeware on the back. But still a very good nine. Uh, and I think nine should be well over 6.6 .6 grand. I think nine should be about 10 grand. <laughs> because again, we have a 10 on auction right now. Current bid is $75,000. And we've had others sell for 115, 129. Yeah, th these are so insanely crazy undervalued. I took my eights off. I took my seven off because I just, I do not want to sell for, even if someone were to offer me, you know, four grand for my PSA eight. Nope, not doing it. Not doing it. Especially now that my Trophy Kangaskhan's almost paid off. I have like two, three grand left on that. I am not selling anything I do not have to. Every single thing I own is insanely undervalued. <coughs> Another Lugia first edition raw. I would have given this a five to a six. Uh, sold for 720. Um, so obviously much less than the 6600, but obviously much lower grade. We had a Lugia first edition BGS 8.5. Had an 8.5 for the centering and the surface and a 9.5 for the edges and the corners. Me personally, I think the surface is most important to me. I don't care about centering, but again, that's just me. However, BGS, anything under a nine for the subgrades, usually a little wishy-washy. An 8.5 could be an 8.5, or it could be like a seven or 6.5. So uh, I would not buy this, but either way, the 8.5 got a $3,050 sales value. And a Lugia first edition PSA seven sold for 1,234. I forget what that's called when the numbers are ascending in a row like that, in a pattern, um, consistently with precision. But either way, um, I think that is very low for PSA 7. Neo Destiny. We only have two here. We have a Light Arcanine, first edition PSA 9, so for 891. And a Dark Espeon, first edition PSA 9, so for 945. I'm not 100% sure why, even though the Espeon from Neo Discovery, I think, yeah, that one was the first Espeon that we see. The Dark Espeon tends to be a little bit more, a little more coveted. A lot of people like it more. It does, in my opinion, have slightly better artwork, even though I don't like to admit it, because I have some special place in my heart for the original Espeon. But yeah, pe people love it. Um, if you're looking to invest, and I don't know which one I should go for, I should probably go for this one. Even though, I, again, I, I think that, you know, the first appearance of Espeon from the Discovery, it's amazing. There's not too many of them. People just love this one for whatever reason. Uh, Sky Ridge, we had a Charizard Hollow PSA 9, sold for $6,900, 6 6.9K. Nice, everyone type nice down below for that. And uh, Crobat PSA 10 Hollow, sold for $2,550. I think that is a record price point for Crobat. Uh, I think Crobat gets a lot of hate. Dark Crobat from Neo Destiny just doesn't get that good, even though that's the first Crobat we see. Um, I think it's because it stems from the fact that so many people hate Zubat just for the first... Um, cave in Mount Moon where everyone's just spammed with them and Geodude. There's not a lot of hate for Geodude, I think, because it involves the Graveler and Golem, one of the first Pokemon that you have to trade to evolve. Uh, and But Golbat just wasn't that good in Gen 1. Uh, Zubats are amazing in Gen 2 because you get Crobat, it evolves from love, it's phenomenal. Uh, Fossil. We have Kabutops, first edition PSA 10, sold for $900. Remember in 2018 when you can get this bad, bad boy for 100 bucks? $900 now. Uh, that is a record price point for it anyway. I think up until recently, we've seen, you know, the, the 6, 7. And it's flirting with that. Kabutops and Hitmonlee are flirting with that $1,000 price point now. You'll you'll definitely see that. Maybe not in Q1, probably in Q2 of this year. Uh, from that same set, Tentacool, first edition PSA 10, sold for $81. And a Moltres, first edition PSA 9, sold for $306. Um, again, this, even though this is the first appearance of Moltres and is the original uh, one of the legendary birds, does not get as much love as uh, Blaine's Moltres. 
I'm not gonna lie, I'm not, I'm not upset. I'm not upset about that one. I very much enjoy that because that's one of my favorite cards when I had when I was a kid. I don't have one right now. I should probably get one, but it's like six thousand dollars for PSA ten, so maybe I'll put that away for you know a couple, maybe the end of the year. <coughs> oh, rocket set. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Dark Dragonite first edition PSA nine. So for seven hundred ten dollars, and a Dark Charizard first edition PSA nine. So for one thousand one hundred fifty. These Dark Charizards, even though there is over a thousand of them for the PSA nines, they refuse to go below that thousand dollar mark. I think eleven fifty is pretty much the base. I don't think you'll. The dip, I think most of the dip is being absorbed right now. We're starting to see, see it go back up. Things flatline. Um, we've got a nice base starting to go back up. I think every one of these sales that I'm about to go over here is undervalued. We have a Dark Blastoise and a Squirtle from the Rocket set as well. First, both of them first edition PSA 10, sold for $3,100. I think the Blastoise uh, by itself should be worth more than that, but I digress. Uh, Jim Heroes, Lieutenant Surge's Electabuzz. First edition PSA 10, so for $490. Then Sabrina's Gengar, first edition PSA 9, so for $610. My favorite set is the Gym Challenge set because it's got so much amazing artwork. It's got Blaine's Charizard. It's got Erica's Venusaur. So many good things that I love about it. But Gym Heroes, because it does not have that Charizard in it, everyone, it just flies so far under the radar. People, A lot of people, they're finally starting to recognize it a little bit. Because you have Rocket Scyther, you have Sabrina's Gengar. Oh my god, Sabrina's Gengar is so good. There's so much history with that card. And there's only 68 PSA 10s, which is nothing. And then there's also, you know, 339 PSA 9s, which... For Pokemon is a little, you know, there's a couple hundred. Okay, it's a good amount. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, this is very, very low. Low, low pop. Uh, and 125 PSA 8s, so it's not like you have a ton of these to choose from. You know, you have 125, so that's 4, 454, and 68. So you're looking at less than 520 cards. Um, less than 520 cards for a PSA 8, 9, and 10 first edition. That is nothing. That could be absorbed by E4 overnight. So speaking of Gym Challenge, though, Blaine's Charizard. We have a couple of these. One sold at a first edition PSA 10 that was sold for <laughs> 6900 again. Everyone, please smash the like button for that because we have two sales for 6900 And they're both Charizards. So, uh, this one, one I think is very undervalued at 6900 Partly because the, I have six of them and there's only 300-something PSA 10s and it's a Charizard. Um, the best artwork in my opinion. But also because we have another one. On Blaine's Charizard first edition PSA 10, so for $10,250. Now, granted, that first Charizard, that Blaine's Charizard that sold for $6,900, that is something that sold, someone like me sold it. They had like 200 something feedback. It was all 100% positive, but they're just, it wasn't a PWCC auction. It was just a normal auction by like someone like me that's just like, you know, I, I just need some money and I'm going to go sell it. Whereas Coins and Rarities, a lot of those guys, that guy that sold it for $10,250, the reason he got that was because he has a lot of cross collectors. He's got all of these old school people with a lot of capital that are used to buying World War II coins, uh, silver dollars, they uh, all those Japanese coins that come out with the, you're the horse, you're the dog, whatever on those silver bars. He sells those types of things. And you could tell by the concentration of bidders. There was only 12 people that bid on that Charizard that sold for 10,250, but there were 26 people that bid on the one for 6,900. So there's a lot more of the fans, of actual fans, that just don't have as much money to throw around. You could tell that because there's 26 of them, and the top bid was $6,900. The top three bids were $6,400, 68 and 6900 whereas Coins and Rarities, that has a much older market, some people that just have so much more capital to throw around just because they've had an extra 20 or 30 years to build that wealth. A lot of people that are collecting these cards are in their late 20s, early 30s like me, that you know, a lot of them just don't have that much capital to throw around. It'll it'll happen. That's why that's why I think every one of these is undervalued, because we're finally starting to see people my age make a little bit of money, a little bit more money, and those prices are going up. You don't hit peak income until you're in your 40s, uh, late 20s. You're pretty much just getting out of college, and you just have a lot of debt still, and you have a family in your 30s. But again, 40s that is when you hit peak income, and that's where a lot of of that money comes from coins and rarities they had people in their 60s and 70s buying these cards as cross collectors 
Um, so even then, at $10,250, I don't think you're seeing a lot of actual Pokemon fans. Just people that are cross-collecting saying, like, you know what? I hear a lot about this Charizard, and my grandkids like it, so I'm just going to get it. Um, this will all come. That's why I'm not selling mine. Mine are not for sale. And another Blaine's Charizard, first edition PSA 8, sold for 1076 Another reason why that Blaine's Charizard first edition PSA 10 for 6900 is stupid undervalued. If a Blaine's Charizard first edition PSA 8 sold for over $1,000, the 9 should sell for over 2000 and that 5 to 8 range, yeah, m minimum it should be $10,000 uh, for that PSA 10. And again, uh, all of those are undervalued. Jungle Set. Pikachu first edition PSA 10. It had the gold stamp, the W Duelist gold stamp, uh, sold for $450. Snorlax first edition PSA 9 sold for $675. And a pre release Clefable PSA 7 sold for $499. There's not too many of those either, especially in those higher grades, because for pre release Clefables, there are no PSA 10s. The highest you can get is 9s. And that's it. Um, and that is it for me. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Oh my god, perps, excuse me. Alright, I love you guys. Goodbye. Meow, meow, meow.